Hey Rat Bags, it's Jade with a Nightingale video. It's been a while since we took a look and that's because there hasn't been much news. I've done a few lore pieces and stuff, but I want something a bit juicier. And oh my gosh, we got that today. A huge info splurge, even more information about the realms and how they're going to work, but also talking about more of the base building, how realms can stay persistent, but other realms will pretty much shut down once you've finished exploring. All in the effort to get you progressing, finding harder realms to upgrade your gear, and weapons from the resources that you find. So I'm going to go over it a little bit and then I'm going to just let the actual dev diary play out as I think the devs do a really great job of just explaining it. So I've cut together most of the gameplay with just a few snippets of the devs talking heads. As beautiful as they are, you can see the full video at the end. I just want to focus on the gameplay because the images shown here are just fantastic. It's showing a real depth in the worlds that you're going to be able to create. If you don't know, the realms are basically you get the ingredients to make these realm cards. There's going to be three different types of realm cards. Biome Realm Cards, Major and Minor. The biomes obviously will allow you to explore a particular biome like the forest, like the swamp, like the desert. And then the major ones will dictate what type of day it's going to be. Big events or stuff that's going to happen in terms of the environment. Then you've got minor cards. These might set you up for hunting more creatures, as they'll explain. And it just sounds great. One brand new bit of information here is that you won't be able to necessarily revisit the same realm. Once a realm portal is closed, that is it. It's all procedurally generated, of course. Even with these preset parameters, it will load up basically instances for you. So if you do go and explore a swampy nighttime field biome with lots of enemies, once you've got the resources from that and you want to go and explore another realm, you are going to have to shut the previous one down. You can, of course, spin up exactly the same, or recipes at least, realms, cards, to create another swampy nighttime field with enemies, but it won't be the same world that you had previously. You won't find any remnants of your camp or any of the creatures' bodies that you found. It will be a new instance. So that might sound a bit limiting. How are you going to have a base of your own? What's the progression like then? Well, you will have a respite realm, a realm to call your own that will always be your respawn point. Whenever you load in the game, this will be the realm that you'll actually start off in before venturing it into others. You can make that realm a safe, nice, nice haven, or you can make it really dangerous. They also focus on the multiplayer aspect. If you're playing with friends, you can all dictate together that you'll play on the same actual world as your respite world. So you can build up that community feeling. And that's something super exciting, ability to go off and do your own thing, but also know that players are doing stuff helping out the settlement when you're gone. Or not, you can just have your own respite realm. And if you want to change realms, then you simply same thing. You'll close that realm down and choose another one to have as your main base area. So why are you going to be shutting the realms down? Well, obviously you need to get different resources and different combinations of the realm cards are going to allow you to maybe encounter different creatures or come across natural different resources. With the carrot being that they want you to progress, get better gear, better armor and stuff as you go through. So devs will explain it more in the actual dev diary, but it's super exciting stuff. I can't wait for this. What I'm really excited about, though, is just the breadth of the base building, the real feeling that you can make something look your home. These all look like placeables that you'll be able to decorate and really have a bit of personality. So each base build, each realm is going to look different depending on how much time you've put into it. The natural landscape with the bones of ancient creatures is also pretty darn cool, as well as these templistic, uh, I guess, ritualistic areas that we might have to go and clear out or maybe activate. Plus, of course, all the weird creatures that are there, wrecks and ruins in swamplands here as well, and just absolutely phenomenal. Honestly, I can't say how excited I am for this. I really want to get my teeth into it. I am a bit pressed for time, though. I'm about to go off on holiday. I'm literally recording this the few minutes I've got left before I've got to go. So I will dive deeper into this in the future, but for now, I'm going to leave you with the dev diary. But yeah, Nightingale is going to be my big game that I'm covering next year. So we thought a lot about how we would pay off this idea of many, many different realms and many, many different places to explore. And so early on in the project, we invested a fair bit of our time and effort and thinking into procedural generation. Over the years, that system got more and more sophisticated to where we could really see the potential of not just having these realms available there for players to go explore, but to actually empower players to control what they see on the side of the portals via realm cards. And the realm card mechanic is our interface 
for players to engage in that procedural realm generation. A lot of the things that players are looking for now, it's not just about getting one generated world, it's about the generation being meaningful and having some level of impact over what you're seeing so it doesn't feel arbitrary. So the realm card system is a way to mix that kind of player agency with the unpredictability and the surprise of a procedural system. Players will be asked to craft realm cards based on recipes they discover or earn through the course of their gameplay. And once you craft those realm cards, then you go to a portal that you'll find in the realms to discover those two. And then you play the realm cards in certain combinations. And so all of those things add up to a recipe that then informs the portal what it's going to open the other side of that. So we try to organize realm cards into biome cards, major cards, and minor cards. Biome cards will introduce over time. We've got the swamp, the desert, and the forest right now, each with their own unique environmental challenges. Major cards represent really big things that will happen in the realm when you play those. And then minor cards, there could be dozens of realm cards in the minor set uh, when we release into early access that have little adjustments and little tweaks on what you get on the other side. So say that you want to go out and you've got a few different environments you could go to, you can choose. Do I want to go to a forest? Do I want to go to a desert? That's the kind of thing you'll be picking your cards for. Then beyond that, maybe you want to go hunting. Maybe you want to go looking for natural resources. Maybe you're just looking for something new. And so you might have a card called something like the hunt and playing that on top, you're going to get more of that focus on you know, dangerous creatures that you can be looking for to collect their hides or just you want a good fight. And on top of that, you might be thinking, well, I really, you know, I don't like nighttime. I find it stressful. I don't feel like that today. Well, maybe there's a card you can play on top of that to make it so that the sun never sets. So once you've opened the realm cards, you'll have a portal that you can go through to get to that realm. As long as that portal stays open, you can go into that realm. But once it closes, that realm is lost. Using the same combinations of cards in the future will get you the same type of realm, but it won't connect you to that exact same one before. So as you stack up realm cards and go further and further on your adventures, you're going to find higher and higher tiered resources. And if you craft things out of those higher and higher tiered resources, the gear that you make will be more powerful and stronger as a result. And so you're going to want to progress and find those more challenging realms so you can get those better resources, so you can keep up with the ever more dangerous challenges you're going to face. The one thing you can do is if you're playing with your friends and they've used you know, a set of realm cards that they have, maybe even ones you haven't seen before, they can open up a portal and you can go through. So if you have friends who've you know, gotten some exciting cards and want to show you the way, then you can tag along and maybe hope to make those cards yourself one day. So players have the chance to declare any realm they want to be their respite realm. And that respite realm is where you will return to if you die and can't be resurrected, where you can fast travel to if you find yourself in a significant amount of danger, and where you're going to be building your estate, which is your main base and the place you're going to invest a lot of your crafting efforts, you're going to customize your state for creative expression. So where exactly your respite realm is, is up to you. you know, it might make a lot of sense to put it somewhere that's calmer and more peaceful, has lots of nice resources, but if you want to be living in a dangerous swamp filled with all kinds of deadly creatures and you think that that's exciting, go for it. We're not going to stop you. We also encourage players to build all of their estates in the same respite realm so you can have different players all deciding that one realm is going to be their respite realm. And that really unlocks social gameplay. You've seen some of that in our trailers, players all building out these really interesting towns where they customize their estates to help each other and do certain things better than as they focus on certain crafting elements, for example. Eventually, if you choose to move on and move your respite realm, then you'll close your last one like any other kind of realm. But that is the one kind of persistent place. You know, when you log back on, that's where you're going to be. So realm cards are something we can keep adding to as we keep working on the game. New content, new cards to give it to you. They're not something that we have a, a set number of. We keep adding to it more and more to show you new places. They're not something that we monetize. They're something that you know are available for you to craft and you know, keep seeing new places as we go on. As we talk about realm cards here, I get so excited to imagine the kinds of realms they're going to create and discover through the course of their journeys by playing different realm cards and different combinations. I can't wait to see what they come up with and find.